so thrilled that you're willing to join us on the podcast today because you are masterful at prospecting as well. And I've heard your name multiple times from top agents that you've kind of got it down to a science. And so I kind of wanted to talk to you about it because what I really liked was when I read, um, read that you wrote, bear with me one second here. I think I accidentally logged out of it, but I really liked this one um, line I read about you, which says, you have developed a client first program that is unbeatable. And I kind of wanted to know what is that? I mean, really it's, uh, we're talking about real estate or are we talking about prospecting? Well, prospecting I mean, for real estate clients, of course. It, you know, it, it, it is no secret sauce. It's just work, you know, uh, unbeatable in the sense that, you know, you, you become more productive by getting, uncomfortable right away and then start getting into your your comfort zone again and a lot of people start off prospecting with a fear that suddenly when you hit a button to whatever if you're doing a dialer or you're just picking up the phone like finger dialing that something's going to jump out and like blow you away <laughs> and yeah. when you yeah. when you actually start getting into the rhythm of it like right now when I pick up the phone and prospect I'm using three dialers on my right ear and three dialers on my left ear. I've got three other screens in front of me. I'm watching a movie and I'm writing, you know, or editing a video. I'm multitasking where most people think that how, how do you do so many things? But it's, it's kind of like walking and doing bubble gum. You, you start walking and then ultimately you're going to get comfortable walking and you, you add the gum. So it really, um, the, the client first is really just attacking the the hustle with practical action I, I guess that's how it would be just yeah. I think a lot of the the trainers and coaches and people who teach these methods they teach from a place of a couple of months from now or a couple of years from now and they can no longer look back to what it was like not understanding how to crawl and so they're teaching like a running, I'm trying to use like comparisons, but it's it's a lot of times when I'm showing someone how to do it, they're shocked that they've never heard this or they'll tell me, my God, I've spent so much money on these people to teach me and no one has ever said this. And for me, it's like, how can they not say this? This is the the beginning of it all. Like the, the root of, uh, yeah, so it's, like my podcast is called Your First Day in Real Estate, even if it's not. And I've always really begun with starting with zero, no matter what production level is at. I don't count that. I count this morning and, you know, an open blank canvas to see how many can I uh, contact in a day and what the basics are. So when I sit down and pick up the phone to call, I usually do it on a live stream. And I'll get distracted because we all have all of these distractions and I'll stop and be like, hold on, how to make six figures in residential real estate by prospecting. Step one, put on your earbuds. <laughs> Step two, dial in. Step three, go. And then let everything else happen because it's so automated. And uh, you know, it's not even procrastination. It's just the distraction that makes you feel like you're actually working. Yeah. I don't know if that answered the question. No, it does in a sense, but I also kind of wonder, so do you do majority of our prospecting? Is it all via phone? Is that where you find the greatest success? Uh, I do a hundred doors a day by door knocking. And uh, my goal is a hundred doors a day. That's my minimum, like minimum. Okay, and well, one talk about that. Do, do you just okay. pick different neighborhoods and just door to door to door? Or how does that work for you? I have a, uh, a rather large city. And I try to hit the same door every 90 days or more. I don't want to keep going back to the same door because you start remembering. Like, yeah, I remember that guy. He said he'd never go out and then you're going to go on the door. And then they look at you and like, weren't you just here like a month ago? I'm like, no, it was like 91 days ago. So uh, it's, it's having a large enough city to hit within 90 days. Some areas, all it'll take me six months. But again, it's geographically there's enough houses to keep my feet moving. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not random. It's specific neighborhoods that are um, physically 
not too challenging. Like, yeah, I don't knock condos. You know, I don't knock uh, uh, gated communities. I don't go into territories that um, have a high probability of like being a joined house. So sometimes there's these houses that are like two houses on one lot kind of thing where they're stuck side by side, like Siamese houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you kind of have to like walk on one side of the house and the next house on the other side. And you never quite know if you're walking in their backyard or if that's actually the front. There's a lot of, again, very root, rooted fundamentals that describe each and every one of my actions as to why I do, you know, what I do at the doors or on the phone. So, yeah, 100 doors a day. Is that first thing? Uh, minimum. That yeah. from 9 a.m. to 11, I usually manage to hit anywhere from 50 to 75 doors, and then I'll go back out, depending on the season. Again, I've been doing this 26 years, right? and it's a seasonal thing, so you kind of got to adjust, but I, I I have a goal of knocking on 100 doors a day, minimum, like that's like yeah. the minimum, and then 100 contacts by phone a day as a minimum. My goal is 300 of that combination does it does it happen very very rarely but i believe that unless you have a presentation or something that requires your mouth <laughs> to physically speak to someone that you should be prospecting so i spend a majority of my time outbound prospecting yeah i think that's, that's what yeah. sets you apart honestly because it's the prospecting is the real blood sweat and tears and if mm -hmm. you've been doing it 26 years consistently you probably have a pipeline that you can pass down to the next generation by now. You know, uh, there is one of my biggest mistakes I've ever made, and I've made it several times. And real estate is a very geographical ter uh, business. And I believe that you have to live and work in your location. I, I don't think I've ever met an agent who doesn't physically live where they work and be successful. I've seen other people who are like, I wish I could work in Beverly Hills. And so they'll drive to Beverly Hills, you know, 30 minute drive and try to establish themselves as a Beverly Hills agent. But, you know, when they go home, they're cutting their hair in, you know, Fontana or Yukaipa. So it's, I just, that, so my biggest mistake I ever made is I've reinvented myself on more than one occasion. I can count definitely six times where I have, ripped myself out of a geographical existence as a productive agent in one community and relocated completely to like zero again and rebuilt it again six different times. And so I, it, my, it's rather pathetic that I, I kept doing this because again, with real estate, 26 years, I should have a massive database. I should never be prospecting again. I don't need to be door knocking. But because I've done it so many times, reinvented myself, I think that might actually be why I am so good at helping other people start over because I just keep doing it myself. Where, um, you know, to start from the beginning, I started in Orange County in 20, in uh, 1993. And it was strictly telephone prospecting, cold calling. And I'm talking like uh, massive numbers, uh, minimum of 100 a day. But once I learned the technologies and purchased a couple of um, higher end dialers, I was doing upwards of six, 700 contacts a day you doing double fisting, which is, you know, one call on one ear, one call on the other ear. And then just doing that kind of amount of business strictly love them and leave them, no past clients, no sphere of influence, just pick up the phone, set an appointment and follow through. This is before the do not uh, call list. This is before really kind of caller ID, unless it was like on a phone, but people still answer. They didn't like ignore like they do now. Even if you didn't recognize a number on your old caller ID, you still answered. It was just like, I don't know who this is, but they still pick up. So uh, it, by reinventing myself so many times in 20, 2003 was probably the fourth, fifth time I had uprooted myself but this time I did it right. I moved to, to a city in the Inland Empire in Southern California. And this time I was a father and a family man. And so I started working more of a pillar of the community type where I was digital mayor before that was a thing or the ambassador to your city. Uh, I had a Hummer and I had it wrapped and I lived in front of an elementary school. So there was this trifecta of marketing and branding that got me really fast to the top. Not only that, I came from Orange County, where now I was in the Inland Empire, where showing up in a suit made me, you know, the best, where everyone was just kind of slacked. I showed up dressed for success, came from a shark tank into, you know, 
full of guppies and yeah. dominated. Then the market crashed and about 2012, 2013, uh, started seeing, you know, I was the number one agent in that town. I could have run for mayor, even though I'm not like political. Everybody knew me, no doubt about it. And I had branding and recognition, and there was a point where I didn't have to call. I didn't have to prospect. And that's the ultimate goal for any real estate agent is not to prospect forever. It's to be the go-to person and never have to do it again. And I've gotten there finally doing it right from 03 to 2016. But right around 2016, I started seeing the school system wasn't right, and I have kids still. And for the very last time, I swear, I'll just leave the business. I picked up and left a demographic where the average price point was um, 300,000 and I was doing 30 to 40 transactions a year to yeah. where I am now, three years ago, to where I am now where the average price is a million dollars and not doing as much volume, but you know, selling less homes, but making the same amount of money. Um, so yeah, the, uh, to, to answer your question about a large database, no, I've screwed it up the entire time. And, I'll, and although I have spread myself within Southern California and I do have past clients and sphere of influence, they're so spread thin that the relationships that uh, I, I've screwed up. Uh, this, is, this is the truth. You know, I, I get that a lot where we're like, man, your past clients, like, don't talk to me about it. This time I'm doing it right though. The last three years I'm building it right. Yeah, may, yeah, exactly. You had the tools to finally build it right, though. Yeah, and, and I'm still keeping it. in touch with those other ones. They are about 30 minutes away, but again, from you know the 300s to the 900s, just a whole different demographic. So it's not as if it, you know there's any crossover much at all. Um, but I'm is still it, selling properties over there. Is it harder to knock doors on more expensive homes? Are they not as kind? Not at all. Not at all. Just a couple extra steps. Yeah, the uh, no, I, I and it's funny. I didn't even have any reluctance to doing it. I went as soon as I knew I was moving here. I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna step up my game with a price point, and I went straight to the the you know two three million dollar houses. And yeah, but the one thing that I didn't take into consideration when I came in here was the that I was going back into a shark tank where I'm like a rhinoceros where I'm just a workhorse and I'll plow through it. I didn't expect or anticipate that there were agents here for 20, 30 years who were on easy street, you know, with the come list me's where I would have to, you know, work twice as hard to get there. And it's, you know, it, it's just been the, the struggle is now not necessarily that I'm losing business to the ultra comp uh, successful agents, but also that there's just too many real estate agents, period. You know what I mean? So I lose a lot of business to, Joe Blow real estate, who's like a one-off, you know, that, you know, my, the cousin, cousin's real estate that's more killing me than uh, competing with the bigger ones. So no, it's not, it's not that hard to compete in the, the million dollar price point at all. Still humans. Yeah. So should the market take a slowdown, you're going to really rise to the top because you're the workhorse. And how yeah. do you that throughout your, your career? Because that's kind of when those agents start to fall by the wayside. The cousin's agent like you quote unquote. yeah yeah i mean i i survived 06 to you know 2012 by becoming an reo king which i never want to do that sucked you well, know what is but that um, mean, James? <laughs> a foreclosure king have you ever seen the movie 99 houses no uh -uh. you got to see it yeah it's yeah. i just heard about it about nine months ago six months ago but there's a, it's a real estate movie. It's a well-produced movie, but it's called 99 Houses or 99 Homes. But it's about a guy who, you know, is in the middle of the foreclosure crisis. And he's the guy who shows up, knocks on the door and says, you got to go. That was me, where I, where I acquired a couple of um, affiliations with big banks where they would say, hey, James, uh, go check out this house at 123 Main Street. And if anyone's there, knock on the door. And if they open, tell them they got 10 days to get out. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. And, I, and then, you know, I would acquire the uh, the listing and I would have to turn on the utilities and clean the pool and sometimes fix the roof and sometimes repair damage. So I had a lot of money in a time where money was tight, a lot of my cash fixing someone else's property. And I had to hire an accountant just to make sure that my money that was going out, the bank gave me back. It's not like they were going to be like, hey, remember when you fixed that roof? We're going to send you a check. And it's like, no, they... Right. 
I think I lost money left and right by floating gardeners and, you know, uh, pool guys for the banks because I, horrible, horrible. Never want to see it again. Yeah. But 99 Homes is very similar to what I was doing, except for the main character was like an investor. That was yeah. the only thing I wasn't doing was the investment. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So when you go to knock on a door, what do you say to them if they answer? I'll keep it real simple. This is one of the things that uh, is questioned most by people. Uh, when I knock on the door, I say, hi, my name is James. I'm with Century 21 Real Estate. And I was just wondering if you had any interest in selling your house. That's it. If they say yes, well, they never say yes. Let's just get over it. They're never going to say yes. They're always going to say no. This is a question that people are going to say no to. And I'm, an I'm expecting them to say no, but I'm anticipating a subtle variation of no that means maybe. And once you train your ear to listen to that by asking this specific question, I'll tell you the science behind it in a sec. So it, it, it's totally different. And once people get it, they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. But it, anybody who watches my live stream, so I'll do live streaming in about 30, 45 minutes, I'm going to go door knocking and I have one hand and you know, a camera in my hand and I'm streaming like we're door knocking together just okay. for accountability. It's interesting. You should check it out. Yes, for sure. Uh, people will come into the room. They'll be like, really? That's it? Dude, that's the worst script ever. And I say, just relax. Just You've been here how many seconds? How many doors have you knocked? Just shut up and listen. <laughs> you know, People want to have an opinion because they, I don't know, they, maybe they went to a Zig Ziglar seminar back in the 70s and they think that I'm supposed to establish rapport and I'm supposed to show up. And everybody wants to go to the door with value. But unless you're showing up at the door offering to clean up their dog poop or like wash their car or hand them dollar bills, you're useless. You have zero value. So most real estate agents will go up there and they'll say, hi, Mr. Jones. I'm like, I'm Mrs. Jones. Okay, Mrs. Jones, nice mustache. All right. You never know who you're talking to. Right, but right. they'll go up there and say, hi, Mr. Jones. Oh, Mr. Jones. Hi, my name is Joe Blow from Joe Blow Real Estate. How are you today? And the people are like, fine. What can I do for you? Well, uh, we're just canvassing the neighborhood and notice that there's a couple of properties that have listed in the area. And we know that once one home hits the marketplace, that two or three more pop up just like it. And we're just wondering, when do you plan on selling or who do you know who might be thinking of selling? And what you have to understand is people don't have time for that. And if they could swipe left on you physically, they would. And they've already checked out. Time magazine put out an article in 2015 that said that the attention span of the consumer is now that of a goldfish. Everybody's heard that one, right? That we have the attention span of a goldfish. So taking into consideration that we're living in a swipe left society where people just disregard, it's never a good time, right? It's just not going to be a good time. Even if they're thinking about it right now is not a good time. Who knows what they were doing 90 seconds before you showed up on their doorstep. The only value you will provide to them is give them their life back and get off their effing lawn unless they're thinking about selling. That's the value you provide. And some people are always surprised when I'm like, hey, you think about selling your house? No, all right, thanks, have a nice day. And like, that's it? You're not gonna, you're not gonna like reach out and spray some green stuff to try to clean my front lawn? You're not gonna like dump dirt on my floor and show me your vacuum cleaner? Because that's the mentality that everybody as a door knocker thinks that you should do. You should show up, capture their attention, and choke them to death until they tell you no. And for me, it's like, no, 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 here's my objective. Do I have a lead? Yes or no? No? Bye. Yes? Step two. Am I going to close right now? Probably not. When will they be interested? So do I have a lead? When can I close? And step three is, obviously, I'm not going to be able to close right now for an appointment because I'm a complete stranger and they're checking out. It's not the right time. But if they are slightly interested, when can I come back? And by what method can I follow up? So do I have a lead? Yes or no? When can I close on them? And by what method can I communicate with them until it's time, the right time for step two? Yeah. So going back to the Time Magazine article in 2015, we have less than eight seconds to get their attention and get what we want. So I'm going up to the door and I'm saying, and I'm going to count on my fingers for the video crowd. Hi, my name is Agent with Company, and I was just wondering if you had any interest in selling your house. Within less than five seconds, I've identified myself and I've approached them with what I want. There's nothing wrong with that question. Some people have said, oh my God, that's so bold, that's so crazy, that's so daring. How dare you ask that question? 
But if that were the case, people would be like, that's none of your damn business or that's so rude. I've never had anyone think that that's forward. So it's not a forward question. It's just right to the point. And a lot of it has to do with presentation, right? If you show up looking like Joe Crap Ragbag, they're going to be like, what's wrong with you? Like, If you look greasy, but if you show up professionally, everything I have is branded. I'm clean cut, clean shaven. I keep a distance. There's a lot of overthought that I've put into door knocking in particular where there's a certain space of distance. I'm making eye contact. I'm not creepy. I'm not like walking up all stocking. I'm not sweaty. There's a whole bunch of just... Because I understand I've got less than eight seconds, but also I've got less than one second for them to look at me and be, size me up. Like they, within one second, they've judged you. Yeah. So now you've got less than eight seconds to spit out what you want before. So as I'm walking up to the door and I ask this question, knowing that I've got less than eight seconds before they're checked out because their attention is gone, I've got to identify myself and ask that question. So now what will happen is that it's, it is impossible, and I do this every day, and everyone who listens to how I do it, they, once you understand this, it changes everything for you. If you ask a question and the knee-jerk response, like when the doctor gets that little rock and hits your knee and it always kind of jerks, mm-hmm. you never really know what he's looking for, but you know he's looking for something. Even though like everybody's knee jerks, it's the way it jerks that he's reading. Like did it, it was a little slow, is it a little – what I'm and anti- I'm expecting them to say no, but I'm trained enough to know to hear a subtle variation of no that means maybe. So here's how it goes. Agent with company, I was going, I wonder if you had any interest in selling your house. And I go, no. It's okay, thank you very much. Have a nice day. It is impossible, I assure you, it is impossible for them to think maybe or yes and say no without me picking up on it. So here's how it'll sound. And I, um, if it didn't work, it wouldn't work. If you are thinking yes, what I'm doing is I'm walking up to your door and all you're hearing is real estate. You've already judged me. You're hearing real estate. And in your mind, in a flash of a second, you're like, well, actually, we are thinking about selling this house. This is so weird. That's kind of coincidence. But no, they're going to do something with their their voice. That's going to be what I call a soft no or a reluctant no. That's going to come out like no or not right now, or not at this time, or not really, or I have an agent, or what's my house? It's going to be some singing like fluctuation of their voice that is very different from it. And again, you watch my content, you will hear it. And when I train people to hear it, I tell them, I go, watch, you're going to walk away from a front door and you're going to ask yourself, did it just happen? And the answer is yes. You just didn't spit it out. <laughs> you didn't like catch it. But once you notice that, then it's super important for you to go with a follow up question and saying, and it's, and I'm going to do this physically for the video crowd because I'm standing at the front door and I'll say, hi, my name is James with Century 21. I was just wondering if you were thinking of selling your house. So much body language and NLP and relax light mirroring and matching depending on their speed. Obviously, if they're holding a, you know, if they're 90 years old and they're holding back an 80 pound Rottweiler with one leg as they peek through the door, I've got to be a little bit quicker. If they open up the door and they're like, hey, how's it going? So I'm like, hey, how's it? So there's subtleties in the the connection that I've got to squeeze into that eight seconds, but I'm not trying to build rapport because it's not possible. You're not going to do it. I'm not bringing value. I'm interrupting their day. Each one of them is going to be a different read each time. So I'll say, hi, my name is James. You want to come here? I was just wondering if you had any interest in selling your house. No. Say, oh, do you think maybe, and I do this, uh, I do this by default now. I did it and you can rewind. But I do this Columbo-esque. You know Columbo? Yeah. Columbo the detective. So a Columbo the detective, for those who don't know, he would, he's a, a detective who would like go to the guy who was guilty and ask a bunch of questions to let the, the, criminal think he's kind of off the hook because Columbo's asking a bunch of like random questions and sets the criminal at ease. And then at the very end, his famous line is like, oh, one more thing. And then he'll ask that question that's just like, oh, and then the guy runs, right? Because he doesn't yeah. know. So what I'm doing is like this borderline Columbo thing where I'm going up there and asking, obviously my first question is extremely aggressive, right? Not like tacking, but it is open. 
My, right. I wonder if you were thinking about selling your house. And they're like, no. Again, this is me using that singing mm -hmm. style of voice. I say, no. What do you think? And I jerk my body backwards as if I'm about to leave. My body says that. And sometimes my hands even do it where I do this like twisting. Like, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm no longer on the uh, attack or on the offense. I'm now leaving your front doorstep. You can put your guard down. Because as I say those things within eight seconds, they're building this wall of like, go away, right? And as soon as I say, oh, you th and I, and, oh, do you think maybe, wondering if you had any interest in selling your house? Like, no. All right. You think maybe later down the road you'd reconsider? What I'm doing is I'm jerking, twisting my body away and softening my approach. But in my tonality, I'm subliminally, if you can say, letting them feel as if I'm out of here. But one more question. Do you think maybe later down the road, meaning that I'm not ta I'm taking it out of this very same moment where it obviously is uncomfortable. It's clearly not a good time. You don't have to tell me that. I'm out of here. But you think maybe later down the road, there's the words that I'm saying, but the words that I'm saying is in a tone that they interpret with yeah. my subtext that I'm telling you. Do you think maybe later down the road you'd reconsider? Nine out of 10 times when they do that, no. And I say, do you think maybe later down the road you'd reconsider as I'm walking back and pulling away? Like, well, my wife, my dog, you know, we're moving to Tennessee or something. They will open up undoubtedly, without a doubt. If I, I see so many houses that I don't get because you just can't get them all. It's just going to be the way it is. But so many times I'll go to the MLS and I'll see a new listing. I'll be like, yep. That was a lady, right? I knew, I knew she was, and, I'll, and I know homes that are coming on the market before they hit the market, but I couldn't get them as a lead, whether it's get their name, number, information. There was something there that I knew that after you know, hundreds of thousands of doors, almost like a spider sense now where I can pick up on those subtle variations, just sense something. The listing I got two weeks ago, I just walked up to the door and I felt it that the lawn was kind of dying as I walked up to the door. Mail is a little bit piled up, and then I go to the door to, to knock on it, and there's a chirp from the smoke detector. Okay, what am I thinking? Maybe pre-foreclosure, abandoned property. You know what? Something's not right here. This isn't kind of – so I looked up the name uh, using a software, looked up the name, called him up. The guy goes, yeah, actually, it's, we're getting a divorce, and we've just left the house. It's abandoned, so you know, if you want to list it, if you can convince my ex-wife, go for it otherwise. So I, I got it, but – you you pick up on these subtle things. So when I go up to the door, I'm taking into consideration that eight seconds that I have to capture their attention, ask a question, and then if they hesitate or give me that reluctant, I will say, well, do you think maybe later down the road you'd reconsider? And they're like, well, you know, we were thinking about going to Tennessee, but it's not for like a year or two. Oh, okay, great. Then what I'll do is I'll shift my body back to like relaxed mode, right? I'm I'm doing all of these things very, very consciously but they don't know it. Like I'm setting, I'm, my shoulders are back now and I've stepped forward a little bit, but not too much, keeping a little bit of personal space. And I'll say, well, and I'll, and I'm doing this automatically while we're talking. I'm like, well, do you have any idea what it's worth? And I'm doing like this, well, maybe, well, you know, I'm like this magical guy who can tell them what it's worth where most agents will be like, well, why don't I come over and give you a CMA where I'm just having this conversation with a complete stranger, still keeping in mind the very short time frame. I have to spit all of this out. All I'm trying to do is, do I have a lead? When can I close? How can I communicate? So now I got a lead. When? You think maybe later down the road? Well, we're thinking about it. Okay, so now I'm, by asking, do you think maybe later down the road, and they open up, now I've got to back off again, Columbo style, and step away and ask them a question that is along the same topic, but not necessarily going to confront them to put their wall back up. So do you have any idea what it's worth? And I do this like, hey, you have any idea what it's worth? And I'm, you know, looking around like I'm estimating their house. Like, well, you know, we check online. Da, da, da. And for example, I love hate Zillow. If they go like, well, Zillow says it's 800. I'm like, well, what do you think of that? And I'd be like, whatever. Or, eh, it's not bad. I'm getting in their mind of like, what do they think their value is? So I'm setting all of it is so. <sighs> Stealth, right? Everything is yeah. extremely deliberate. And I've had people, like some of my one-on-ones, though, if they're Southern California, I'll take them door knocking. And I'm just like, dude, how did you pick up on that? I'm like, but, and then after two or three times, I'm like, I saw that. I heard it. I, I could sense it. You're going to have people who will go to the door and they're quick and they're done. 
You're going to have people who come out and shake your hand and talk. But each one of those is, again, with an expectation. If your expectation is to go out and set an appointment, you're going to go home depressed. If your expectation is to go ask that question, and all you're going to do is listen for that maybe, and then ask that ultra critical question, do you think maybe later down the road you'd reconsider? And then they open up. And to continue that conversation passively so that when they say, oh, do you have any idea what it's worth? I'm like, well, would it be okay? And I'll, you know, I'm holding my phone and say, would it be okay if maybe I could email you some information on the values? Maybe we can talk later. What's your email? And I'll get their email. All right, well, you know what? Let's keep in touch. We'll, we'll talk later. If they're not interested in selling in the next 60, 90 days, I got what I wanted. That's all I wanted. Right. I wanted their email address to communicate with them, which was step three. By what method will I keep in touch? Hmm. And then that's it. I'm done. But it, it day after day, it is extremely easy now to generate what I consider to be bona fide listing leads, but they're not come out and list me. I've figured that at about 4,000 doors, I will get to a door where someone, they won't necessarily say yes, but it will be in a roundabout way. It'll be a contract within 72 hours, but it's 4,000 doors. Wow. So, but each territory is going to be different. You know, individual results may vary. Individual effort will validate. Right. Absolutely. And then I gave I'm you just, an earful. <laughs> it's no, a long answer, fantastic. but it's very, you're asking me, so how do you do brain surgery? I'm like, okay, sit down. Because it's no. so exacting. It's precision, but it yeah. works every time. It's repeatable. And, and I think that there are so many agents that are going to learn a ton from what you just went into. I'm curious, do you find more success with the door knocking or the telephone prospecting? Doors all day long. And why is Doors, that? Doors hands down. You can read more and you can hear more at the door, at the phones. They can hang up now. Um, you know, I've, I, I've got affiliations with some of the bigger dialing companies and the math is one uh, out of 100 outbound prospecting calls, 6% is what you can expect. Mm -hmm. So it's almost, not that it's a waste of time, but it's it's extremely time consuming for the level of leads. For example, back in 1993 to 1999, I could get on the phones, cold call, generate that quick rapport using the same script and not be shut down. Like People are just much quicker to detach you, right? They're much quicker to just cut the rope. Where back then you could keep someone on the phone, but now just everyone's you know much quicker. So if it's not the right time, I'm going to hang up. Where yeah. before people didn't hang up on you as much. They wouldn't ignore. They wouldn't ghost you. Ghosting wasn't a thing back in the day. Now it's like an yeah. everyday occurrence. People ghosting me, you know. Yeah. And so um, for the doors, I get better results because I can use NLP and physicality, and I can read things better. There are certain things that, that, that I like, uh, things that would take away from the effectiveness, both on the phone and at the door. And that's what I call like a thumbtack. You know, when you go to the, uh, they, there's a wise tale or a myth that when you, you're going to go take a lie detector test that you stick a thumbtack in your shoe or somewhere and you're supposed to, like, right, right. when they ask you that question, you step on the thumbtack and it like freaks out the system. Yeah. A thumbtack in door knocking and cold calling is an Amazon package, um, a baby crying, a dog, the mailman walking past, a gardener, something that will give me a false reading on my attempt to extract, do I have a lead? So for example, when I'm going out door knocking, I don't leave my propaganda, I don't leave it where they can see it. I usually like hide it as I'm walking up to the door, I'll hide it, but when they open up the door, it's just me and me and that person, and I have a clean reading on, hi, my name is Adrian McConey. I was just wondering if you had any interest in selling a house. Okay, well, thank you very much. Or you think maybe later down the road you would go, okay. But if they see something on the ground, which always is distracting, especially when it's like another agent, they're going to come out. Many, many times people will like come out their door and be like looking for a package or looking for something there because yeah. people are just too damn distracted. We got less than eight seconds, and now they're opening their door, and I don't even have their attention now. Now they're going to pick up their package and here they are reading this and I'm out, right? Yeah. So um, at the door, you're able to 
see more and you're able to pick up more on the energy and you can see it. And quite honestly, they can't hang up on you. <laughs> they Sure, they can close the door, but if they close the door, it's because they're not interested. Right. Um, on the phones, for example, you'll never get the person who's like, well, you know, I have a neighbor. Again, many times people will say, well, why don't you ask who do they know who? For me, that's never really worked because it's like, okay, who do you know who? Well, I got a friend. His name is Joe. Okay, I have Joe's number. No, you can't have Joe's number. I'm like, well, you give him my card. Sure, I'll give him your number. It, it's just, it's you're not going to get what you're looking for anyhow. But there are maybe one out of 100 houses, there are those nosy neighbors or the village, you know, snooper that will come out and be like, oh, hi. And then they'll kind of escort you out as you're walking out. And they'll be like, well, you know, that one's a divorce and that one's on drugs. That one, I think, might actually be thing. You know, they died and they'll give you the rundown of the neighborhood. But again, every individual is going to give me the results. My expectation is not to extract every ounce of life from everybody at the door. I think that is one of the biggest reasons why people are afraid of cold calling and door knocking is that their expectations are completely not in line with reality. So when you have a, a, a broker or a manager who says cold calling doesn't work or door knocking doesn't work, it's because someone told them or maybe they found out themselves that it didn't work because they went out knocking with a turd script like, hi, my name is Adrian Company, and we noticed that a house in the neighborhood just listed, and we know that every time one person lists, three more lists I can. We were wondering, who do you know who might be? That's not going to work, especially yeah. now in this day and age. So if their expectation was to get success and set a listing appointment from door knocking, mm -hmm. and I'm saying it's going to take you 4000 to set an appointment for door knocking, and you only got to 20 yeah. and then you went to lunch and checked out, and you're like, this doesn't work. If it took that many, man, oh, man, could you imagine if that's all it took? Same thing with, with cold calling. I hear other trainers say, well, you talk to 30 people a day and you'll be super successful. Like, 30 people? Who? what list is this? Tell me. What town? If, if there's a town where I can pick up the phone and talk to 30 people a day, I will stop right now. I'll pack a suitcase and I'll go dominate that town and then I'll send for my wife and kids, you know, in two months from now when I'm loaded. Right. Just right. It's not reality. Maybe for other people. I don't know. I've been doing this too long, though, and maybe I'm too bitter. My expectation is more realistic. But I also see other people making the same effort, having the same results. And if they have different results, it's because they're doing something else. There's a steroid involved with their performance that doesn't relate to the natural ones, you know what I mean, where they've got – a budget for advertising or they've been in the city for 20 years. So we can't go out and say, we're going to compete with the top agent when they've been there 20 years and they know everybody. Right. We're, it's not going to work for us. So yeah, it's um, the doors hands down much better. You can get a lot more engagement and interaction. You can get a lot more, extract more results and you get a feeling, even if it's not a feeling, even if they're like, no, not right now. And you know, they say, and they close the door. At least you know, for example, on the phones, data, more often than not, the data's wrong, right? If you got Tom Smith on 123 Main Street, in my opinion, is like 70% chance that it's good and 30% chance that it's all wrong. Like just data isn't as reliable as it, I wish it was. And so if you go to the door and they close the door on you, but you get that sense, at least you have the address and now you have that solid data and you have an, a hint that it might be, now you can go to the internet and search their phone number and maybe track them down that way. Whereas with the phone, again, you know, if the data's wrong and they go, no, not right now, maybe let her click. You're running the risk that you're going to send them a letter and say, hey, let's keep in touch. And that that address is actually correct. You know, you might actually be sending it uh, so many times where I'll get a lead and I've sourced my data from everywhere. I don't just go to one listing uh, one database source for my phone numbers i've used them all and i've compiled them all into one phone book and i deleted the duplicates so that i have a in my opinion i have the most robust telephone book in southern california because i've sourced it from multiple sources but it doesn't mean my data is that pristine that i can trust a 50 cent stamp and it might be cheap now but if you go out and door knock 100 doors a day and you pick up the phone and speak to a hundred people 
a day, you're generating anywhere from three to five people who say maybe. Yeah. And you send a three to five letters, that's like two dollars and fifty cents, three dollars and fifty cents, but now you're stockpiling ones from before. And so my you know, my physical mailer budget could be anywhere from you know, two to five hundred dollars a month, depending on how many personal stamps I'm sending to people who are saying maybe. Yeah. And the quality of my lead, I would take I would take a hundred of I would take ten of my maybes over a hundred of Zillow, Truly, or Realtor.com, even Facebook advertising maybes, because those are obscure people that are tapping everything. I'm physically speaking to individuals who have hinted that maybe, which is far superior. Oh, yeah, for sure. But even though telephone prospecting isn't as, as good for you, you still do it, right? Just to rest my legs, because okay. <laughs> door knocking is extremely uh, physically demanding, and sometimes it's too hot. I might think my limit is like 85 degrees and I'm smoked. Yeah. The well, weather permitting. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm usually in like a, a, a golf shirt, you know, most okay. of the time. Yeah. Uh, when it gets below about 60, I'll do it in a jacket. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, and, and again, you have to do phone follow up. Everything is in the follow up. Again, your expectation is to, uh, there's, there's a night and day difference between cold calling or cold door knocking and follow up. And it's, uh, I always have to kind of slap, digitally slap people when I'm live streaming or like, so how many appointments you said? So what is your ROI? Like I'm, I'm cold calling. I'm not following up. So what is your question? What is my ROI on door knocking? To a uh, hundred contacts I'll talk to, I'll get three maybes. Out of those three maybes, I probably need 300 maybes for me to get something solid because people say yes today and they're gone tomorrow. People say, you know, no today. So it, it's a very strange, uh, it's a very weird world where you'll think you got something and then it's gone. Yeah. I mean, how many people I'm like, my next listing. And then all of a sudden they're like, no, we're staying. Talk to the wife. We're, we're not going anywhere. I had one that I was working for like two years. You had the contracts ready to sign and the renter decided to buy it. <laughs> Here I'm like, oh, you know, so you just, you, your expectations have to always be in line with reality based on the behavior and, and what you're doing so that you're not disappointed. And I think that's one of the, one of the biggest misdirections that most trainers and disservice that they do is to throw out numbers and I don't know where they get these numbers from that lead people into thinking that it's that simple. It's, it's not, you know, and I don't think people are looking for the mad. I would hope people really, you know, we say people, Oh, they're looking for the easy button, the magic. I, I don't think people are doing that, but they are looking for a lesser path of resistance. But I think if they actually knew what it would take, most, you know, most people would just, they would either do it, with the right expectations or just not do it because they're like, hell no, I'm just not going to do that. I'm afraid of calling once you're telling me that you want me to call for like five hours a day, every day. No, I'm not going to do it. So shell out your money and pay the, you know, pay the lead dealers then. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think this has been very interesting and it'll be so insightful for many agents, especially when you talk about starting somewhere fresh and building up again. I'm just curious because I don't want to take a ton of your time. If you had one thing to tell agents today, what would that one thing be? That would help them. No. Uh, plant your roots deep and don't go out too far. I mean, that's that, that's one of the, I mean, there's a couple of strong pieces of suggestion that I would have, but one of them is because it is real estate, you've got to plant your roots and don't don't branch out too far. It's very easy, for example, to grab the expired list, you know, the expired list, and say, give them to me, because they think they're the low-hanging fruit, but it's low-hanging fruit, but there's, you know, a hundred coyotes chomping at the same fruit. That's not a low hanging fruit. That's heavily competitive. And you don't even know what the story is behind that, that expired. You don't know why it expired. Where most, you know, they're, they're taught like they're the low hanging fruit, they're the hottest. 
But if you don't know there's a reason why they're not selling in the first place, maybe they actually did change their mind, right? Maybe their dream home they were going to buy burned down and that was the only one. And, you know, and so uh, the expectations, I, I guess the, the best piece of advice would be stay near and have realistic expectations mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, nothing, nothing will kick you out of the business faster than thinking that it's easier than it is. I mean, it, it's fun. It's just not going to be easy. You know what I mean? Um, it, it just takes a lot more than people think. And a lot of these TV shows, you know, like on Bravo, the million dollar listing, they condense these guys hustle from a nine month or six month shooting window to yeah. a 30 minute episode. And all they see is, okay, so they see one obstacle. The person gets mad and they drink a glass of wine and now they're happy again. Oh, yeah. that's all I got to do is drink wine and everyone's happy. Right. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't see the sleepless nights. And, you know, a lot of it is scripted whether or not, you know, totally is. I think some of those guys don't even go on the show anymore because they're just like, dude, this is not even real. <laughs> Let me just yeah. go back to work and selling real estate. I'm not totally selling myself, you know, and pandering it to the, to the entertainer. But, um, it's just it, it, the the biggest mistake. I gosh, I really just that was the one thing, and I hate regrets, but I, I really wish I never left this territory because I started 26, 27 years ago, five miles that way, three miles that way. Had I did, had I known what I know now, then there's no doubt about it that I would be in the top ten of real estate agents in California because of my work ethic and again knowing what i know now i've i've personally sold over 1000 transactions me not like a team not like the century 21 system it's james festini and my wife who's you know the tc but had i i could have leveraged way more of that and known you know tighter community and established myself much deeper and richer had i done what i did in 2003 to 2016 here in 1993, but I wouldn't have known, you know, that's the thing. It's like hindsight is 2020. Had I known, stay here, keep the relationships, you know, relationships are everything. Right. But a lot of these real estate agents, again, talking about like the trainers, they teach you from a place of already being somebody in a relationship, in a community where you have a platform but if you are brand new, don't know anybody, and you've been antisocial all your life, and now you want to go out and be this, this person, you're going to have to open your mouth, and you're going to have to open your mouth thousands of times a week just to get known, to get exposed. You know, you look at the social media platforms, it's not enough to just post once a day on Facebook now. That's like four or five times a day for every platform, period. Because right. the, 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 you know, the, the fire hose is turned on on every platform. You've got to be able to throw, a, you know, a rock in there <laughs> to, to manipulate the system just to be heard. And everybody is right now, again, not thinking that they think it's easier and that they're reluctant to do these little small things because they think the rewards are going to come instead of understanding they're going to have to do a lot of small things and maybe the reward will. And if you just release your reluctancy to or your fear of picking up the phone or knocking on the door because it's going to be way more than you think. You know, me, I'm a hundred doors a day, 200 doors a day. And here, you know, here are, our listeners are afraid to do 10. Now what, you know, now that I've shown you the expectation, now that I've shown you the reality, are you ready to do that? Cause it's not going to happen. And whew, man, if you go out there and you hit 10 doors and you get a listing, Holy cow, go do another 10. And holy cow, do another 10. And then like do it all in January and then don't work for the rest of the year. <laughs> that's, that's even better. Just bang it all out right away if you get that lucky. But I don't know. I've just, I've never been lucky. So my best advice to people is like, if you're not, if you don't get lucky, you have to outwork those who maybe they are luckier than me. Yeah. Stay, well do you deep. go days, James, with all that hard work and not get any listings? Is all that, the time. That, so that's the normal. That's normal. Stuff. All the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. for I, I'm and again, for me, psychologically, it messes with me because I'm coming from a place where I was used to 
four to six listings every month, four to six sides every month. And to go, you know, 30 days without a listing, because again, to me, I was a brand new agent in March of 2016. Although I've had, uh, you know, I'm walking in with 23 years experience and I was, I was the king of my own country. And now I'm, you know, shot into another place. I'm just another peasant. So for me to not have the success that I was feeling was like a double whammy to be like, you know what? I'm working still much harder to try to catch up. When you go into this real estate business, when I came into here, I knew that I couldn't expect to be the number one agent within five years. I've been here three and a half years and it's starting to finally pick up momentum. But I knew that there were other, that, for example, if you're going to, most agents will come in there and be like, who's the number one agent? I'm going to kick their butt, right? They read 10X and crush it in the same day and they're like, I'm going to get it. And then they look at the number one agent and say, well, the number one agent's doing 100. I'm going to do 120. Like, yeah. You really got something there. And they'll go out there with this expectation, but what they don't understand is that you're nobody and they've been in this community for, let's just say, 10 years, but that they've spent how much money and time in that 10 years. So let's just imagine they spend in 10 years $300,000, right? Let's say my community in, in marketing and effort and you know, 10 years. Yeah, it's realistic to think that they've spent that much money in getting their name out. Thousand, you know, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month, whether it be Zillow, Truly Realtor.com, bus benches, fly swatters, you know, whatever. So now you go in there and you think I'm going to beat them. How long do you think it's going to be to beat them? Five years. So now, if they've spent three hundred thousand in ten years, and you want to pull this off in five years, you're going to have to spend twice as much money and work twice as hard to do it in five years because you're trying to take a shortcut that you know you're you're running a path a marathon and you're trying to beat the guy who's you know miles ahead of you what is your shortcut run faster and like i don't know maybe even get a scooter <laughs> like cheat and the only way to cheat in the system is dump more money into it there's no shortcut in getting faster but the problem is is in that five years they're still always going to be five years ahead of you so you're never going to quite catch up you can't go into a marketplace thinking you're going to beat or even be number one, go to like number five and say, that's realistic. I, I, you know, number one in my town does 80 or 90 sides a year. If I was a brand new agent, I was listening to some of these podcasts and some of these podcasts say they put on these mega teams that are doing 100, 200 sides a year. And so they get this implant that says 200, 200, 200. And they go into the marketplace and they think, I'm gonna do 200. And then they see this number one agent's doing 80. They're like, 80, that's nothing. I'm going to do 200. Well, it's just you're, you're completely like detaching from reality because you hear other areas. You don't quite understand as a new agent uh, in particular the concept of teams, right? That's something like when I was growing up in the business back in the old days, it would have – that was called a company. You know, there would be like the broker and there was 20 people working under them or 10 people working under them. Now they call it a team and they put a face to it. So Joe Blow Real Estate, mm -hmm. new agent will come in and say, I'm going to beat Joe Blow Real Estate. And they never look behind and say, oh, Joe Blow's got like 10 people working behind him. And here I am competing with 10 runners. So again, it's all about, it's all about perception and expectation and knowing what you're capable of and constantly being grounded in reality. So when you ask, it, you know, is it, are there months where it doesn't happen? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A lot. And, and in my ultra competitive marketplace, you know, and knowing what I know, I mean, I'm coming in, you know, with skills and not crushing it. How long is it going to take someone with no skills to dominate? And my only, uh, my only disadvantage is popularity. And you don't get popular without spending a ton of money or putting in the time, which, you know, I'm doing more time than money because there's never going to be enough money to get me popular fast enough that I can compete with, you know, my own effort. So wrapping your vehicle and branding yourself and putting yourself out there. But yeah, you, you, there, there's, it's a roller coaster of uncertainty. But that's the one thing about prospecting is that you can always, that's always something you can do 
to feel as if you're doing, you know what I mean? I've always known that even if it's a crappy day, that if I look back and I say, but I hit a hundred doors and I made my hundred contacts, I got 200 attempts at a sale. I'm all right. Even if it didn't happen this day or even if it didn't happen this week, it's knowing that I'm putting in the time. It's like you know, working out, diet and exercise. You know, it's as long as you went to the gym and the scale doesn't reflect it, but you went to the gym and you ate right, you can give yourself a pat on the back, you know, and say, you know, it's not going to happen that fast. And that, that's how real estate is. It's a lot like weight loss. It, it didn't, not going to happen overnight, but if you do the right thing every day, do your, you know, do your numbers, do your prospecting and, and remain consistent. Don't back down from that. Wonderful. You know, fear this. All such yeah. great, great advice. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you being a guest on the podcast. And if people want to learn more about you, James, where do they go? Uh, Jamesfestini.com. That's okay. it. Okay, Instagram. Great. I'm a big Instagram guy. So, yeah, okay. Wherever you feel best, I'm probably there. I, I okay. put out a lot of content. But yeah, Instagram is one of my favorite because I do a lot of video. Okay. Yeah. And they can go see you do the door knocking, which I think would be very valuable for many agents. So. Yeah, it's uh, again, it's a, an expectation. You know, people will come into the room and they'll say, oh, I'm wait here until he gets a listing. Like, oh my God, you better hold your breath because yeah. it's not going to work that way. It's going to take right. a while. I'm like, well, you know, and always people always want ROI. And my answer is, you know, what is your production or what is this? And the answer has to be, unfortunately, you know, snarky and saying, it's better than if I didn't do this. Right. And I, and I say, individual results may vary individual effort will validate meaning you do you you know my results you can't compare to my results yeah i see other agents who are dominating and i see the numbers i'm like where's the catch where's the catch and then i look and they're like a hundred thousand dollar price point where like the top 10 agents all do a hundred deals a year i'm like well shoot, man, i was in that neighborhood i'd definitely be doing a hundred deals a year because that's you know the and I can only say that because I was in a territory where that kind of turnover was, you know, right. doing 40, 50 sides wasn't impossible because there was that kind of turnover. You're in an area with million dollar properties and there's a lower turnover and, you know, absorption and all the different, you know, things that are involved in, in the bigger properties, a whole different animal. Yeah. You, know, you just got to, you got to do you and measure yourself based on the top five in your community. But uh, don't listen to anyone when they say prospecting doesn't work. It's the expectation that you have when it goes out there. And again, the scripts, the scripts are, are so important. I just, I cringe when I hear anyone else's script because they're not paying attention to the attention span of the consumer. And everybody hates telemarketers and everybody hates door knockers because they take their time. You want to, you know, be valuable, give them back their time. The only yeah. thing you can do is get the hell off their lawn and get off 20, 26 years of doing this every day. I don't think there's anybody who's ever, I, I honestly, God, have a, when I die and I go to heaven, I have already prepared a question for God. It's already there. What's that? I, and he, I'm going to say, God, in the grand scheme of things, how do I rank in outbound prospecting for business? <laughs> I'm not shitting you. I've already, like, I'm ready for it. And he's like, that's your question? I go, yeah. I want to know how many calls I've made outbound versus the history of planet Earth. Right, and I right. have a strong suspicion that God's going to be like, damn. Well, there's this guy in India who started when he was like 10 and he was using a dialer. Yeah. But James, you're like in the top. I honestly feel that like because of how long I've been doing it. I mean, there are other people who might say, oh, I got more. But they want to be doing like two or three years. I have had a minimum standard of you know making these outbound calls for 26 years and when i was talking about like the technology i stumbled on a piece of paper I, i've always written my numbers down and i found a piece of paper from 2003 before the do not call list where i shit you not i had multiple dialers and i was using a software um it was like a machines actually like boxes with setups and like double fisting and i was using an upper and a lower ear so i was doing two four six eight and then nine, 10 telephone lines. And I was like listening and watching screens. Blend. If you ever watch me prospect, it's, it's like flying a space shuttle. Like I'm seriously just watching screens. And there were days in that little screen or that little paper where I was monitoring 
consistently through 2003, 2002, 2001, when I was using the, the Gemini 2000 was the name of the boxes, I was speaking to 500 to 700 people a day. Oh, wow. Wow. And it's and it and to say that like now I'd be like, ah, he's full of shit, he's bragging. But these are like little notes that I just made for myself before social media where it's like, how many did I do? How are my numbers? So when I pulled out the stack, I was like, no wonder I was doing so good back then. Like I'm not even scratching the surface as to how many it really takes. And I right. because I went in 03 and I got comfortable and I did so much and the REOs and all that. And so it's almost like I got detached from what really it took. And when I saw that, I was like, oh shit. 100 is now my minimum for doors. 100 is now my minimum for calls with a target of 300 attempts at a sale a day. And maybe that's what it takes. And that's just, wow. Could you imagine, you know, what, that's a lot. Like yeah. that makes me the hardest working prospecting machine out there. And Mojo, which you're familiar with, probably. Yeah. Uh, Mojo sponsors my podcast. So we've been uh, besties for like 10 years they they i i help them develop their software because they see the behavior of how i do it and so we have a lot of like brainstorm i'm their guinea pig yeah and so a lot of their developments have to do with what i'm doing and like double fisting and stuff and they just launched a really cool function called leagues inside of mojo and what it does is it cre it's like a socially kind of thing where you invite people into your league and you can see other people's numbers, call rates, appointments, contact rates, how many outbound dials they're doing. Yeah. And uh, when they launched that two or three days ago, I actually was able to see a lot of the people who've been following me and watching me do the prospecting. Now they're in my like little private social media group where we see each other's numbers. And now more than ever, I see how much work some of the people are putting out there to try to get those results. But I'm also seeing the results where I'll get all the time, man. That's the thing with live. You'll get people who come in here and they'll say, well, that's a stupid script, man. I could, I set four or five appointments a week, a week and I, and I build rapport and I establish relationships and I don't know. I'm like four or five appointments a week. That's fantastic. Hold on a second. On Smith. Hey, where's he at? You ain't got a listing in like six months. What kind of appointments are you going out there? And so I always, always, always have to check the stripes because I'm transparent with my failure and success. Yeah. And when people come in here and call me on my shit, I'm going to check you out. And when they, and so many people have an opinion on what it takes to succeed in real estate mm -hmm. from a place where they've never done it. If you watch like Gary Vaynerchuk, you probably do, right? Are you a fan mm -hmm. of his or not? Where people talk about like Facebook ads don't work. He always talks about that where people don't do Facebook ads, but they're the same people who've never done it. These right. are the same people who say your script sucks. Why don't you try this? Because they went to one like Amway sales pitch back in you know the 70s or Melaleuca or Shackley or freaking Luscious Lips or whatever the hell they're selling, you know, with their MLM. Where you know they always have like these you should do it this way, and then I have to be kind and say you're not doing anything. Why are you giving me advice? Just, yeah. you know, move along. And and it, it's just really hard because people just don't understand the level of effort prospecting takes. And a lot of these, a lot of the coaches are out there. They're throwing numbers out there where I can, I, I have a hard time listening to anyone else's content because sometimes they say something that to me is malpractice. Like they should not say these things to people without so much context behind the comment. You know, you can do this if you just do that. And I'm like, no, you're not telling them you can do this if you just do that for five years. <laughs> People don't right. read that. All they hear is, you know, I, I can do this. Okay, boom. And they think it's going to happen. And that's why the I, I'm convinced, I'm 100% convinced I could, you know, eliminate 50% of that turnover rate of the 80 agents who 80% of the business, 80% of the agents fail out of the business in two years. I know I can, I can cut that in half, but it would start by cutting in half the amount of agents who are coming in because I would expose it, you know, and people would be afraid of coming in here if they knew that's what it took. Most of the real estate agents in this business quit before they ever leave, you know, they ever leave. Yeah. They, they're they they're out of the business within the first year, but they don't know it for like two years. <laughs> they're still handing out their business cards. They don't know they're done. 
No, I'm it's so that. much more work, but I wouldn't do anything else, right? When I'm out door knocking, it's like 85 degrees. I'm like, wow, this sucks. And someone opens the door and they say, really? Is the market that bad that you have to be out door knocking? I'm like, you have any interest in selling your house or what? <laughs> no? Okay, well, thank you very much. And I'm walking away where most people are like, oh, kill me now. This is so pathetic. I just should... This was not the glamorous thing I saw on Bravo. This is not at all. Right. <laughs> you know, and they'd be like, done, right? Where's the yeah. wine? And and yeah. where I had to be like, I would I would rather in that and I asked this question like two weeks ago, would you rather be driving for Uber or would you rather knock two hundred doors a day? It's your right. choice. Like if you're more you know, if you're fine with that, then then do that. But don't think that my ego is affected by someone thinking that it's dirty or army or less than to be a telemarketer. I'm a telemarketer, you know, I'm a high paid telemarketer. I'm a door, I'm a door to door salesman. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I don't have a problem with 100 people telling me, I don't have a problem with 200 people telling me no every day. I have a problem with me going in, you know, to my kids and saying, do your homework. And they say, no, that's rejection. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, Someone tell me no at the door that's not interested. No worries. You know, it's, a, it's this is the best job ever. I just wish people knew what it involved. And I'm really kind of glad that no one's willing to do it. <laughs> right. <exactly. clears throat> it makes it easier for me. God forbid everybody door knocked. You know what I mean? Right. God forbid yeah. everybody actually prospected. That's why I don't touch the expireds. They're there. But I'll, I'll pick up. Hey, my name's Agent with Company. I was calling to see if you had any interest in selling your house. Every other agent's out there saying, Hi, my name is A.M. The Company. I noticed that your home is no longer on the market. I was just wondering, when do you plan on hiring the right agent for the job of selling your house? Oh, fantastic. And if you were to move, where would you go next? Fantastic. You know, all those turds are polished and they're all over the Internet. But, you know, where I'm trying to find out, are you even interested? No? Okay. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. Are you ever interested? No. Well, you think maybe later? Maybe. Okay, let me back off. Let a hundred other wolves go in there and chomp at his heels. I know it's not happening today. I'll call him in a week from now. Hey, you thinking about selling? Well, not really. Okay, you think maybe later? All right. So like in a month from now? Well, maybe in two or three weeks. Where I jump in and I'll say, okay, stop, print, knock on the door. Hey, my name is Agent. We talked on the phone. Sorry to bother you. You thinking ready? No, not right now. Okay, I'm out of here. So I'm always just kind of like sticking and jabbing to find out, are you ready? No, I'm out. You ready? No, I'm out. And it is so like soft sell. Mm -hmm. It's about being at the right place at the right time as often as you can be. Yeah. That gets that gets what I do, but it takes far, far more numbers where other people are like, you know, I used to be with Mike Ferry's coaching when I was doing like three, four hundred you know, calls or five hundred calls a day. And I told the coach that and he's like, what the hell? Dude, your numbers are way off. What are you saying? How does that not work? I'm like, dude, who told you your number? Why do you think that this is what where you tell me where I can go to do that and I'll move there. And then I'll send for my kids. I, tell me where I can do this and we'll do it. But everybody is, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe you can find out that mission. Maybe that's one of your articles. There you go. Yeah. Where do these theories come from? Where do these actual numbers, yeah. who, who manifested this like 30 calls a day and you'll sell real estate? What town is that? Who, what, right. 30 calls a day if you've been in there in that business in that town for 20 years and everybody knows you? And you built a database and you kind of know something's happening and you call them, you know, 20 or 30 people, maybe 20 or 30 expireds who know your name. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But 20 or 30 complete strangers, they're not even thinking of selling. And you're not, you're, ugh, it's hard because yeah. I work so hard. Maybe it's just because I'm not lucky. That's all. Uh, yeah, I think you just found the niche <laughs> that works for you. So. Uh. Anyway, yeah, thank you so hard. much, James. I'm gonna, Thanks. I know you want to go knock doors, you, so I'm going to let you If go. you need anything, you call on me, all right? Okay, will do. Thank you, James. I like what Talk you're doing, and good luck. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye.